can make a map for any individual in an ideal world. Okay, we're not quite the, there yet, but in an ideal world, we could take your DNA sample and my DNA sample and point to 50 or 500 transposons that are different between you and me, and this might underlie some phenotypic differences between them. Uh, what we would be doing, what we are doing, is comparing normal tissue to tumor tissue from the same individual to see whether in a cancer there might be some activity of these elements. And there's, there's good reason to think that there might be because they're, they're controlled by a process called DNA methylation. And DNA methylation goes awry in cancer. So we think it's possible that, well, we know there's, there is uh, good evidence that in some cancers these elements become greatly activated. So uh, we're, we're, that's another area we're very interested in. Well, they definitely, their expression is increased. So in, in normal tissues, they're sort of quiescent. They don't make RNA and proteins, uh, except in the germline. Uh, and so one of the mechanisms that keeps them from expressing in somatic tissues is DNA methylation. In a cancer cell, DNA methylation is often dramatically altered. It's reduced. So in theory, this should increase the expression and should increase the jumping, but nobody, there's no clear-cut evidence for whether transposition increases in cancer. This is one of the questions we want to answer. We want to get a clear-cut answer to that question. Uh, I realized, you know, when you're writing a paper and it's complex and there's a lot of information, you need some shortcuts and you need to communicate efficiently and uh, so I said, well, we need a name for this thing. And there are retroviruses and there are transposons. And this is a transposon that has a life cycle like a retrovirus. So how about retrotransposon? And uh, so <clears throat> anyway, I, I put it in one of the drafts of the paper, and it stuck.